Hi, it's Mr. Schnell here. Uh, I just wanted to do a little quick demonstration about the conservation of energy in that wall. Um, what I have here, just some water in three different uh, glasses. These two are empty right now. Uh, this first one, you can see it's kind of an upside down looking cup. It's kind of a bizarre thing. Um, but I used it as my potential energy starting point. Okay, so I've got the water inside this cup is representing the total energy in my system. So my system consists of these three cups. So this water, which is my total energy, right now is contained in the potential energy cup. Um, and I use this cup just because, you know, it would be pretty easy for it to potentially fall over. Um, so that's kind of the idea with potential energy, is that it can easily fall or, you know, be let loose of a shelf or something like that. So this is my energy. Right now it's all stored into potential energy. And if I transfer this energy, I can't make more water. I can't make this water disappear. All I can do is move it from one place to another. Whether I move it into one of these cups, onto the countertop or the floor or into my mouth, the water is still there. I'm just moving it. And so right now if I transfer my energy into kinetic uh, energy, now my total water it stayed the same. I only have this much water in my system. This is my total energy. So now all of my energy has been transferred into kinetic energy, which by the way is the energy of motion. And so if this water is moving around, it has kinetic energy. Now, I have this other cup with the same label of potential energy on it. Now, the reason I have another cup is that there are multiple forms of potential energy. This one I was, I was kind of insinuating the idea that this was potential, uh, gravitational potential energy. So it had the potential to fall based on its height or its position. And so what this one could represent possibly is elastic potential energy. So the, the energy stored in a spring or a rubber band or something squishy like a ball or something like that. Uh, it could also be represented as chemical potential energy. So maybe the energy stored in a battery. So now with this kinetic energy, I can transfer, remember I can't destroy it, I can't make more of it, I still have the same amount of energy here. All I can do is transfer it from one place to another. So maybe I'm going to take this moving kinetic energy and put it into my, uh, let's call it a rubber band. So I took some motion and I stretched my rubber band. Okay, so now all of my kinetic energy is in a rubber band. Now it's potential energy again. And I can take that rubber band and I can let it go. And it's transferred again into kinetic energy. And maybe that kinetic energy um, made the rubber band go higher in position. So my rubber band has a high, higher height. At the top of its height, it has potential energy. But somewhere in between, it has both. A little bit of potential energy and a little bit of kinetic energy. It's still moving, but now it has a higher height. And so now we can see how this idea of, of total energy is conserved within the system. There's always the same amount of energy, it's always the same amount of water. Sometimes it's potential as it goes higher up. Now it's all up there and my kinetic energy is at zero. And so this is the idea of the conservation of energy. Now one thing you might have noticed is that even when it was being transferred from one thing to another, there's always a few drops of energy left over. Okay, sometimes in this case it's spilled on the countertop or it's just left over as drops. And that is something that we're going to look into a little bit further on in, in the course. And that's the idea of efficiency. Every time there's a transfer of energy from potential to kinetic or maybe from a gravitational potential to a spring potential, there's always some of this leftover energy. And what happens is that's, that's the idea of efficiency and the fact that we lose energy every time it's transferred. Usually as heat, sometimes as light or sound, something like that, something that's not usable. And so this idea of efficiency is something we're going to be talking about later. Um, but needless to say, the energy in a system is always constant. Even in the losses of inefficiency, the water is still here. I can still see the water here. I just can't use it because it's not in my cup anymore. So that's the idea of the law of conservation of energy.